okay, the plan at last. Like I said, um, I use the, that sort of taparima framework, that's what I call it, um, to uh, do the planning and so I'll use it to shape the, the framework of this kōrero. Um, sometimes it gets a bit muddy because they overlap, you know, but anyway, we'll start with, I'll start with Ako and here's why. Acquisition planning is even more important for domains of language use and projects of language revitalisation where high proficiency across members has yet to be reached. So us, two second language learner parents, three kids mainstream school, high proficiency, certainly not yet achieved. Our core needs to be a major focus for us and because the kids aren't in kura, it's down to me to make that happen. First step, what kind of learners are we? So my ma time were picky. My ma time were picky is um, academic. Uh, he's 13, remember? He likes to be precise. He likes to be right. Typical oldest. <coughs> he likes to know why and he likes patterns because he's got a real maths brain. Um, so he and I go to Atarangi Kura Po. Uh, which he really enjoys, and at home we work through te rangatahi, so I kind of think I'm keeping both sides of his brain happy there. Um, my second son, Ma Tangiro, is more intuitive and is not so concerned about being wrong. Um, recently I've seen him, he's really trying to speak more Māori and I can see him grasping for structure, so I'm going to start um, taking him to Ātārangi when it starts up uh, again this this half year. So the three of us will be going to uh, Tārangi and with Mātangi too, what I try to do with him is I just try to reflect um, to him the sentence structure I can see he's grasping for and I think with repetition it does help but I think he needs, I think he's got to a point where he needs formal. So that's our Tārangi kura pō for us. Uh, my, pō to, my pō tiki, he doesn't need formal ako at this point, he's just wide open. And the more I speak to him, the more rapid his uptake. I think I increased my language profici proficiency at just the right time for him. Um, and that's the kids. Don't forget the parents. Paul and I go to Kurareo or Ngati Kahunganu every year. Um, and we're also hoping to take the big boy this year if Atarangi runs a group again. And Paul also did the Pinakitanga. Um, me? Um, because don't forget you. Uh, you're really important. Uh, we saw in the environmental scan um, how key my language proficiency is in this plan um, and its continued development and um, what happens if you neglect it. So uh, this is the learning path that um, I chose and um, I had the best teachers in the world. Um, so lucky, lucky me, but there are lots of fabulous teachers up there. Um, um, I also continued, I went to Te Wānanga Aotearoa, I'm in Te Atārangi, um, and this year I'm doing a paper called Te Reo Whakawhiti o I Ara with Darren Joseph at Massey as part of an honours programme, and that's really great for this kind of language. So, you know, I say to myself, these hands are not dropping that ball again. Um, and that's our individual learning styles and paths, um, and even though we are each different, this is a big message, so... If you've uh, gone to sleep, wake up. But even though um, we are each different in, that, in, in our learning styles and we're at different levels, I've seen that when we have the opportunity to learn together as a whānau, that's when we get the biggest shifts in language in our home. So if you get the chance to learn as a whānau as well, take it. Um, so tīnana. Um, I know it's karakia and waiata and those things, um, so I'm not sure if I got this right, but <laughs> this is what I thought of when I thought of tinana. Um, hoarding, 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 hoarding. I know, well, I was going to say I no longer have, longer have a tidy house. I've never had a tidy house. So hoard, hoard, hoard. I've got heaps of books, heaps and heaps of books. This is some of our favourites. Um, lots of picture books. I read to the boys every night. That's part of our thing. Um, and even the big boy still doesn't mind a picture book occasionally, mm -hmm. as long as it's a good one. Um, that one at the front, that's really great. Um, uh, but I've kind of moved, well not moved on, we've still got lots of picture books. I'm always scrounging around the second hand shops and the um, trade me and every now and then I pay the big bucks for new. Um, but if you click. Um, these books I'm really looking for at the moment, that next level book, you know, that's much harder to come by. Um, yeah, but second-hand bookstores and trade me are pretty good. 
also music. Uh, my sad little collection. Well, it's not sad, but it is a little collection. Ingariaha kohe etsi. And I've got a stereo in the kitchen, and this is what plays from three till dinner time. And um, maybe because it's small, it's good because there's lots of repetition. So, you know, the other morning I said to the little boy, um, Kia hia ngā prao paki mau. Kia kutahi, kia rua rāne. Kia kutahi rā, kia kutahi rā. <laughs> so I know it's getting in there. Um, <laughs> mess with their minds. Okay, um, so that's hoarding. Um, translating. So these are, I've uh, made a bit of an effort to translate games. So kemu kāri and kemu puri puri. Some of them are really easy. You know, ngā neke, me ngā arafata, that's pretty easy, as long as you know dice and, you know, those kupu, you're pretty all right. Uh, that, guess who, kimi kimi kowai or kowai, you need to sort of build some language around that so for uru kehu, komingo mingo, era momo. Um, the kids pick it up pretty quickly, um, so, but, you know, you do have to put a bit of work into that one. But the hipoka, that's operation under there. I had to find names for those weird things that you pull out of them. And then I, you know, and then you also gave them a word list for the body parts. There's some good body part language in this stuff. And then uh, it was hard to actually know how to make them use it because, you know, theoretically they could just go till it beeps. So um, I created a sentence that they have to use before they're allowed to pull it out. Um, next is recipes. So Kai um, plays a big part of our language use at home. Um, as it does in life, really, doesn't it? So what I've done is, um, I've, the recipes that we all really like as a family, I've started translating those um, and starting to create a recipe book. See, I turned the, Maori, the French girl into a Māori girl. She's got a moko, you can't see. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so, basically, it's a bit ad hoc still at this moment, but it's a horopaki rumaki for us, tunukai. Um, and this helps us do that. And um, so I, I pick out which boy hasn't got much homework and doesn't have a sports practice, and I'll grab him and we'll cook kai together using the recipe Eroto Katoi Te Reo. And um, if you've got a boy like Picky, a child like Picky, um, something to think about is what I do with him now is I get him to translate it, him with his little academic uh, precise brain. Because uh, he's got models to follow now, so he translates it and then we cook together and cord it, all the stuff that he's just translated. Um, next. I call this giving your home a Māori makeover <laughs> with my new best friends, Matua Sharpie and the Fano Whakapiri. So, um, <laughs> it's an oldie but a goodie. Um, <clears throat> next. So um, that was hoarding, translating, also creating. So I'm lucky, um, my kitchen came with a pin board. There was a pin board in it. And um, there's stuff all over it. Actually, it's like spreading out in the walls, you can see. But um, yeah, you do have to get a bit creative. That's lucky, because that's right by the kitchen table uh, where you know a lot of life happens, really. But it's covered with karakia, waiata, kiwaha, word lists. Um, usually grouped around themes, kaupapa, that we're sort of talking about. Um, there's, uh, oh yeah, there we go. So this is some of the stuff that goes on the board. There's heaps of really cool stuff on the internet now, eh? You know, Nicole's page is awesome. That iau te moi, iau tō moi, that's, um, that's really cute. Um, Engari mō tēna, the little one just thought that she looked so funny that um, he says that all the time now, you know, just, um, gross, I hear gross all the time. Kids all, everything's gross, you know. So I'd be like pottering in the kitchen, I hear them at the table, you gross, and I say, te anu anu hooky, you know. Mum's in there again. Get out of the conversation, Mum. And, um, and I just said it so often now that they actually say that. Mehe te, they love that one. They love that one straight away. And I thought I'd try this one, but I didn't think it was going to be a winner because it's kind of a bit big. I don't know if you can see it, but... He kupu anō mō te, mō te hōtoke, ko mākere mumu hūpē tautau. But actually it caught because it's got one of their favourite four-letter words in there. Hūpē. Yes, yeah, so they actually know that that's another kupu for winter and um, they use it a little bit occasionally. Who would know? Um, and then you can make your own. So I've made a few. 
this is my Matangi Rau. Now they all want to star in their own kiwaha. Um, and you know, Te Anu Anu Hoki, uh, I thought that's a good little structure for them. How can we sort of get that in there? And so with their whole Pokemon Go craze, now we've got Te Piwari Hoki, and I'm hoping that they're just going to, I don't like doing it like school. Kids get enough school. I don't want to sit them down and say, let's learn this structure. So they know Te Anu Anu Hoki. Now they know this one, and they're smart enough. They can see the patterns starting to come. Yeah, so Pukunoke. Yep, that's me usually. Um, so I've also involved the kids. You can see Ma Tangiro there, and Ma Tangiro, Ma Tangiro is my right hand man. Um, well, he's been sick a bit lately, and so my resources don't always look like this. Sometimes they're just Matua Sharpie again, just writing wordless and stuff. And he comes in and um, he makes it beautiful, you know. Uh, you'll see some pictures later, but yeah, he makes it look good. And he's quite invested in it now. He said to me the other day, uh, Mama, ka, ka, I got ch I charge your wire pukoro. Mum, we need a word list. I don't know how to say I've got to charge your wire pukoro. I thought, wow, awesome. Um, click. So that was Tinana, Mana. So uh, one of our big jobs is to find ways to sweeten the deal for the kids, right? So one of the best things we've done is find a Modako Kopapa for number one son and his dad. And um, this was actually suggested to me by someone I met at Kura Whakarau Water who had a teenage boy, so those networks, awesome. Um, one of the great things about this particular Modako Kopapa at home is the Kaifakahaere um, speaks almost, almost completely in the real. And Paul was really surprised because um, Picky understood almost all of it right from the start because he's a sneaky little passive speaker. <laughs> um, <laughs> doesn't like everybody to know how much he actually knows, that's what I think. Um, one of the benefits of engaging with external language communities like this is that it's not just mum speaking Māori again. You know, it's actually someone who's pretty cool. Um, kids respond so much better if it's coming from someone new, especially if it's someone they look up to. Also, although te reo is the medium of instruction, this is not a kaupapa reo. You know, it's not the, the reo is not the main kaupapa, it's something else, it's using your body, you know, that the boys like. Uh, he's meeting peers who speak or understand the reo, he's meeting some great Māori male role models, and he gets to do it with his dad. How cool. Uh, yeah. Ko whaimana te reo ki roto i tērā tamaiti, right there. Um, Um, also, Spongebob is a big winner in our house, especially with Ma Tangiro. If the Tarau Poro Fa speaks to Reo, it's cool. Uh, and now I see Avatar The Last Airbender has started, and so that's going to be great for our house. Um, the younger son's also keen for me to hook him up with Mahi Maina, which is a cool Reo community, so I need to find some time to do that. Marama Pū. How do you do that with kids? Um, I don't like to make it too heavy. I, I like to keep it fun. But um, I must admit, when there was something about the language being in a dire state that um, one of the boys heard, and he said, that's not right, Mum. And I said, how many Māori mates have you got, honey? He's got heaps. And, um, and uh, I said, oh, how many of them speak Māori? And he's like, oh, you know, so that's about as heavy as I like to get, really. Um, but we do, you know, look, there's my tangi though. They're in there, they're in there. So they know what this is, that's cool. I think that's good about, for me, that's enough um, at this stage. Maybe if I start getting some resistance, I'll tell them some scary stories. Um, whakamahi, at last. 